Good morning, everyone. Welcome. We're glad to have you with us here to worship at Roy Christian Church. My name is James Sayers. I'm the pastor here, and we are thrilled to have you with us either live in the room or online. If you're watching online on Facebook or YouTube, YouTube, whoa, that's a wrong word. Uh, we would love to hear from you. You can find us online. You may not know this by searching for Roy Christian uh, on Facebook or for me, James Sayers, and Roy Christian Church on, on YouTube. Uh, like us, follow us, subscribe to us, share us with your friends. Uh, we we want to uh, make an impact on lots and lots of people. Uh, our youth group, grades 6 through 12, are going to be resuming uh, a brand new year of, uh, of meetings this Wednesday, the 17th. Um, we're going to have a supper at 6 o'clock and then uh, worship and Bible study at 6.30 until 7.45. Um, so we'd love to have as many as possible here. Um, we'll start out in here. Uh, well, actually, we'll start in there with dinner, uh, and then we'll come into this room. Uh, next Sunday, August the 21st, the Gideons International will be here to visit with us and report on their ministry. Um, you've been reading in the newsletter in the bulletin the last few weeks about what they do. Uh, we are going to take up an offering um, for them, so um, you, you'll want to prepare uh, for that to have uh, something extra uh, for their important work. Um, next Sunday also is our Raptors game. Uh, if you haven't bought a ticket yet, you can do that today. Tickets are $15 for adults, $10 for children, uh, and that includes lunch at 1230 and your seat to watch the game at 2. Um, if they need to sign up to do that, who should they see? Probably somebody who's out in the foyer would be my guess. Go to the welcome desk and look for a, a baseball, I guess. Um, due to the baseball game, our monthly leadership meeting has been bumped um, uh, ahead one week um, to the 28th at 4 o'clock. The elders will follow uh, up with the meeting as well. Uh, we are excited to announce that in two weeks, on the 28th, uh, we're going to launch a new Sunday morning Bible class. Um, COVID kind of wrecked everything, as you all know. Um, we, we've gotten a lot of things back in place after COVID. Um, we're, we're ready to add this piece uh, back um, to our schedule. Um, <clears throat> Cody Gwynn, uh, who's one of our elders, is going to be teaching the International Sunday School lesson at 930 in the large classroom just um, through that door right there. Um, there are student books and daily devotionals that go along with that study. Uh, on the 28th, we're going to have a preview lesson um, because the first Sunday of the quarter is when we will be at the park for Praise in the Park. And that would be a really complicated thing to pull off. So I'll have a preview on the 28th, uh, and then it'll start every, uh, every Sunday uh, beginning on September the 11th. Uh, and then, as I already said, Praise in the Park is going to be September the 4th on Labor Day weekend. Uh, there's a favorite Sunday of a lot of people in the church uh, will be over at George Whalen Park at that pavilion over there. Uh, the service starts at 1030. Um, then we'll have a picnic potluck afterward. Um, and you can stick around and hang out as long as, as you would like. If you are new um, to the church uh, and you haven't yet texted the word hello to our, uh, our texting church uh, number, uh, 385-217-8399. We hope that you would do that soon. If you're a regular part of the church family and you'd like to um, be kept in, in the loop about what's going on, text that word, loop, um, to that same number. Uh, there's actually a list of other keywords you can put in um, into that number to get into various groups uh, down in the bottom of the bulletin. Uh, we have a bunch of announcements. I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Um, but actually not because it means that there's good stuff going on. Children's Church, um, mark your calendar for our end of the summer pool party at the Rody Ranch in Honeyville on Sunday, August the 28th. Uh, we will leave the church at 1 and be back by 5.30 p.m. Uh, and preschool, uh, our, our preschool is uh, getting closer and closer. Uh, our Kingdom Kids Preschool could use some classroom volunteers uh, when school starts in September. If you would like to help, you need to see Jen. Uh, we have to have a, a background check on all of our, uh, all of our uh, volunteers. Uh, one last one, sort of. Um, uh, we are making a big change in 
uh, in the office on our church database. Uh, it's pretty, pretty impressive what the new one will do for us. And so we're trying to make sure that we don't transport over a bunch of bad info. So uh, we'd also like to put together a new directory, hopefully before a transfer of information screws everything up. So uh, we're going to pass this around today. Um, guests, if you would like to be in the directory because you know this is home and you're never going to go away, be sure to write your name uh, on this someplace. Get us all your information. Um, everybody else, um, go through what's there, correct things if necessary, add, delete, spelling, uh, whatever you've got. Uh, and just kind of pass this around through this morning. Um, whoever has the last, uh, their hands on it uh, after the music is over this morning, if you'd put this on the table out on the uh, foyer, that would be awesome. So uh, where should we start? Right over here. <clears throat> if you would like to get more information than just a text message, uh, you can sign up for our church's newsletter that comes out each week. Um, to email inboxes. Uh, you can sign up for that at our website, LeroyChristian.org. You can also get uh, other things there, like subscribe to, um, uh, put your name on our prayer chain list, uh, share a prayer request. Uh, several people did that this week. Um, let me go over those uh, quickly. Larry and Christy Kite asked for prayer for Levi, uh, who is a little boy who is dealing with leukemia for a second time. Um, he's got a, a long road ahead of him. There was a request for prayer for Bolt and Donna Wilson. Uh, Bolt, uh, Bob and Isabel Ballard have been traveling back east. Uh, we want to pray uh, for their safety. Um, and our students are heading back to school this week if they haven't gone back already. Uh, so we want to be praying for our students, for our teachers, uh, for staff and administration for a really great year, uh, for a safe year. Uh, when a lot of good things can, can take place. Uh, Jerry Esplin called this morning um, to let, uh, let us all know uh, he'd like some prayers for his great-grandson, Graham. Um, Graham was in a bicycle accident yesterday. He seemed to be okay. Um, this morning, they could not wake him up. Um, so they life-flighted him to Primary Children's Hospital in Salt Lake. Uh, they've determined he's got some pretty intensive um, head injuries. So... Uh, Jerry would especially like your prayers for him and for his family. Let's take a minute to pray together uh, about these things, about other things that may be um, causing you um, some concern this morning. Uh, let's take all of them to the Lord. God, we're grateful uh, that when we come to you, we don't have to um, assume a special uh, posture. We don't have to bring um, special uh, special gifts to you. You're just a father who wants to hear from his children. You want us to have a close relationship. Um, you already see everything that goes on in our world, and, and you want us to talk to you about what we see, about what we experience. Lord, for these, uh, for these close friends and our, our family members, um, for our students, um, for our nation, Lord, we pray um, that you will become more and more um, evident uh, in each situation. Um, that there would be a greater interest in hearing what you have to say, uh, that we would yield um, our will, our desires, um, to what your will and desires are. Father, we are so grateful for the blessings that sh you shower upon us every day. Uh, we live in homes where there is running water and electricity. Um, there are, there's fans and coolers and air conditioners um, there are sprinklers, there's, there's all sorts of things that we just sort of take for granted. We say, this is the way that life ought to be. Um, we know that so many people in the world don't have any of those luxuries. So uh, we are grateful, Lord, um, for what you do for us. Uh, we don't ever want to take your, your blessings for granted. Thank you, Father, for loving us the way that you do, uh, for providing for us a way uh, to be closer and closer to you and your son. It's through his name we pray. <clears throat> uh, if you'd like to give a, uh, a gift or offering uh, today, um, there are envelopes in the, uh, in the chair pockets and uh, back in the two boxes that are outside either one of these doors here. Uh, you can also give electronically through the website or a newsletter. Uh, you can schedule things through your bank if you'd like to do that. Um, we thank you for your offering. 
uh, for your partnership in our ministry and mission here. If you are a guest this morning, we, we don't want you to feel compelled uh, to give. There isn't an expectation or a requirement. We, uh, we offer this service to you uh, as our gift today. <clears throat> in 2 Timothy um, chapter 2, verse 15, Paul says, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. We believe that it is vitally important now and eternally important for us to figure out how to handle God's word. So we want to make sure that everybody has one. Uh, if you need a Bible, please take one from the chair rack around you someplace. Uh, if you have a family member or a friend, a neighbor that could use a copy of God's word, please take that and give it to them as well. Uh, that is our gift. It is nearly the least uh, that we can do uh, to make sure that, uh, that people um, begin a relationship with God. <clears throat> and that will bring us to the message this morning. Uh, we've been talking for a few weeks about, um, about the Apostle John, uh, who refers to himself usually as the Apostle Jesus loved. Uh, he is uh, dearly beloved by Jesus, um, even though he was kind of a knucklehead as a young man. Um, by the time he was an older man, uh, he, was, he was much more loving and actually kind of lived up um, to, uh, to the expectation uh, that Jesus had given to his followers to love one another deeply from the heart. Um, we've been going through this series now for about five weeks. Uh, we've got just two or three more to go. Uh, we'll finish up on Labor Day weekend uh, looking at um, uh, John's second letter and his third letter in the next few weeks. So if you're in uh, 1 John, uh, not the Gospel of John, but the letter of uh, 1 John back to the back of the Bible, uh, we're going to start in chapter 5, uh, verse 1 today. Let me read what John has to, uh, to say to us. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are in agreement. We accept human testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God, which he has given about his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God accepts this testimony. Whoever does not believe God, <clears throat> sorry, uh, whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. If you see any brother or sister commit a sin that does not lead to death, you should pray and God will give them life. I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I'm not saying that you should pray about that. All wrongdoing is sin and there is sin that does not lead to death. We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who is born of God keeps them safe, and the evil one cannot harm them. We know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. We also know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true by being in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Then John closes with these words, Dear children, 
Keep yourselves from idols. We could spend a week in that chapter. Um, we, we don't have a week exactly this morning. There'll be a lot of things that I, I wish we could talk about um, that we just don't, um, don't have the time to deal with today. Um, you may remember um, from five or six weeks ago as we began to look at 1 John that, Jesus, uh, that John began this letter um, as a witness giving his testimony about the physical Jesus. 1 John 1-2 um, the upshot of it is that John heard him, saw him, touched him, and experienced him personally. That was the testimony that he had to offer. Here in chapter 5, John points out that back in the days of Moses, under the law, that all it took was two or three witnesses to convict someone of a crime, to establish what the truth was. So here in chapter 5, John says that there are three witnesses in agreement about Jesus as the Son of God, three witnesses that are constant, perpetual um, witnesses. He talks about water, blood, and spirit. Um, over in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, Paul gives a list of evidence as well. Um, his is a little different. He, he's... Uh, points to the facts of Jesus' life, that Jesus died, that he was buried, that he rose, that he appeared to many. Um, John gives, uh, gives his list of witnesses uh, as, as well, um, witnesses that will stand the test of time. Now, my understanding of, of these is maybe not what every other preacher and Bible teacher uh, has, um, and that's okay. Because there's, there's a lot of room for uh, different understandings here. Um, but I, I, I think it, it's pretty clear that this is what John is aiming at. He says that, uh, that the water gives testimony about who Jesus is. Now, he could be talking about the water that's involved in physical birth, water and blood. Um, but that doesn't seem to fit exactly with what John has been talking about for four and a half chapters. I believe that more likely John is talking about baptism. What happened when Jesus was baptized? There was a testimony that came down from God. The declaration was, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. Do what he says. In baptism, we see the, the, the death and the burial of, and the resurrection of Jesus' physical body. In our baptism, uh, we, we identify with our Savior. We are dying to sin. We are buried and the old self is put away. And we are raised into a new life just like Jesus. Water is a perpetual uh, witness to who Jesus was. The Son of God who defeated sin and death and rose again. John talks about the blood. Again, there is certainly blood involved in, uh, in birth. Um, just as a little aside, I, I totally disagree with people that birth is a beautiful thing. It is gross and nasty. Um, whether it's out in the, in the barn lot or in an emergency room or a delivery room, it ain't pretty. It's, it's, it's gross. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on. I'll just share that with you. Don't tell me about how beautiful it is or miraculous. It's the way God intended it, painful and nasty. All right, um, so I don't think that, that John is talking about, uh, about physical birth again. I, I think he's talking about something else um, concerning the blood of Jesus. Jesus shed his blood, um, crying, uh, tears of blood in, uh, and sweat drops of blood in the garden, and then ultimately shed his blood on the cross for all of us. Um, that blood is what washes away our sin, um, and, and we celebrate that perpetually here with communion when we're together. Communion. The, the bread is the body. The cup is, is the blood of Christ, and we recall his shed blood. Every time we're together, whenever his people get together, we 
we celebrate the testimony of his shed, his shed blood. And John talks about the Spirit. Certainly, the Spirit of Jesus um, stands as a, a perpetual witness. During the time of the first church there in the book of Acts, the Spirit testifies as the apostles are preaching and teaching both the lessons of Jesus, but also proclaiming the history of Jesus, that he came from God, that he lived as, uh, as a, a man obedient to God, perfect as the Son of God, who died and was uh, in crucifixion and was raised again. We see them preaching that message over and over in the book of Acts. Um, we see it on, uh, on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, uh, where Peter and the rest of the apostles are, are declaring the good news to everybody there. But the Holy Spirit also testifies through signs and miracles that we see um, in, in the book of Acts and, and later on. Um, the apostles perform all sorts of, of miracles just like Jesus did. It's not because um, they are as good as Jesus. It's because Christ's Holy Spirit is in them to make, uh, to make evident um, the power of God. Also, the Spirit testifies in His Word. We have this collection of God's words, the things that He wants us to know. We have access um, to all of this knowledge, to all of this wisdom. Um, so the Bible stands as the Holy Spirit's written testimony that Jesus came from God, that he was fully fleshed out. Again, re remember that John is, um, is waging a war against teachers who have come in and say all kinds of crazy things about Jesus that clearly are not true. If they are true, then John and all the rest of the apostles and anybody who has believed in him up to that point have been just dead wrong. And John says, you don't need extra truth. You don't need special knowledge or a late revelation from anybody. You've got the testimony that we've given to you. John says that there are far greater evidences for his truth than for the world's claims. We, we have, uh, have read, greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. There is more than ample reason to believe that God gave his son through the incarnation, the wrapping up in flesh um, that was the birth of Jesus. Again, there's no need for anything extra. We believe in Jesus as the incarnate son of God. And to have Jesus, John says, is to have everything. There's an old preacher story. <clears throat> that tells about a wealthy man and his son. They loved art, uh, both of them. Uh, they loved to collect rare works, and they had uh, put together a, a, a vast collection, all sorts of things from uh, Picasso to Raphael and, and many, many, many other artists. Uh, they would go on tour together and, and look at, at fine art and admire those great works. Uh, they would go through their own collection and ad admire the, these great works of art that they'd collected. This is back during the time of the Vietnam War, and the young son went away to the war. Not long after, that son, the only son, died in battle. The father was notified, and he grieved deeply for his only child. Weeks later, there was a knock at the door, and a young man sat at the door with a large package in his hands. He said, sir, you don't know me, but I'm the soldier for whom your son gave his life. He saved a lot of lives that day, and he was carrying me to safety when a bullet struck him right in the chest, and he died instantly. He talked so much about you, about your love for beautiful things and for art. The man held out his package and said, I know this isn't much. I'm not a great artist but I think your son would have wanted you to have this. So the father opened up the package to find a portrait of his son, painted by the young soldier in front of him. He stared in awe at the way the soldier had captured his son's personality, uh, especially um, his, uh, his eyes. Uh, when he looked at the eyes, it was just like his son was looking right back at him, and his own eyes welled up with tears, uh, he thanked the soldier, uh, offered to, to pay him for the painting. No, sir, there's, 
there's nothing you can give me to ever repay what your son did for me. It's a gift. I, I want you to have it. The father hung the portrait over his mantle uh, with all the other uh, beautiful pieces of, of treasured art in his home. This was the first painting that he took every guest to see. He wanted to show his son. In time, this grieving father died, and there was going to be a great auction of his art collection. Lots of um, important people got together uh, for the estate sale. Um, influential people from all over the world came to see his collection of great paintings uh, because they really wanted to get a hold of some of them for their own collections. The painting on the platform near the auctioneer was the painting of the sun from the mantle. The auctioneer pounded his gavel to begin the auction. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start this auction this afternoon with a picture of the sun. Who will bid for this picture? Silence. Somebody from the back of the room shouted, we want to see the real art. Let's see the famous paintings. Skip this. But the auctioneer persisted. Is, is there somebody who will bid for this painting? Who will start the bidding? $100? $200? Another angry voice shouted from the back, We didn't come to see that. We came for Picasso, for Van Gogh, for Rembrandt. Get on with the real bids. But the auctioneer continued. The sun. Who, who will take the sun? Finally, a voice came from the very back of the room. It was the longtime gardener of the man and the son. I, I have $10. I'll give $10 for the painting. It was all he had. It was all he could afford. Auctioner said, we've got $10. Do I, do I hear $20? Anyone? Give it to him for $10. Let's see the masters. $10 is the bid. Won't anyone bid $20? The crowd's getting more and more agitated. They didn't want this picture of the sun. They wanted the more worthy investments for their collections. So the auctioneer pounded the gavel, going once, going twice, sold for $10. From the second row, a man shouted, Now, let's get on with this collection. But the auctioneer laid down his gavel and said, I'm sorry, the auction is over. What about all the paintings? Again, I'm sorry. When, when I was called to conduct this auction, I was told of a stipulation in the will. And I was not allowed to reveal that stipulation until just now. Only the painting of the sun would be auctioned. Whoever bought that painting would inherit the art and all the rest of the estate. The man who chooses the sun gets everything. Our belief in the Son should both inform and transform our behavior. John says that if we say that we believe, it had better be, it, it will be displayed in our attitudes and actions. What we believe is always made evident whether that is for good or for ill. What we believe always works its way out of us into everyday life. Belief in Jesus as God's son states that God is truth, and that truth, John says, is in the heart. Otherwise, a person calls God a liar by rejecting the idea that Jesus is God's son. He says that it's in the heart, because that is, that's where all the important things happen. You've heard it. You've believed it. You've accepted it, and you have obeyed the message. Um, the, the message about Jesus, that he is God's son in the flesh and the way to heaven. That message is internally integrated, but then it is also externally visible. You might remember that last week, back in chapter 4, verse 7, John said that everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. 
uh, in his gospel, in John chapter 3, verse 5, uh, and uh, talking about the exchange between Jesus and Nicodemus, uh, Jesus said, unless a man is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. New birth, to be born of God, to be born again, is to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Being born again is more than just being kind and, and gracious. It's more than just loving. It's more than, you know, standing around the, the campfire. Um, I love you, man. You're the best. Uh, it's, it's more than that. Those are good things. But being born from God is more than just saying how much you love somebody. Jesus says in John 14, verse 15, if you love me, my house knows this line. Well, if you love me, keep my commands. Love you, dad. Love you, mom. Yeah? Then do what I tell you. That's what Jesus says. If you love me, keep my commands. In John 15, verse 14, the, the truth there is that we are Jesus' friends if we do what he commands. Remember, you may remember back in the Old Testament that Father Abraham believed God. Uh, James tells us that it was credited to him as righteousness. He was called God's friend. He had a close relationship with God the Father because of his faith and his obedience. The kind of love that represents God is a command, Right? Love God, love one another. How can you command somebody to love? Because the love of God, the love that God is commanding us um, to display has nothing to do with emotional attachment, which is what most all of us think that love is. These warm, gushy feelings from somewhere deep inside where we get all wobbly and wavery and butterfly on the inside. You don't always feel that way towards people you love. Right, parents? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love you, but I would like to put you away somewhere for a while. <clears throat> Most of what we consider love cannot be commanded. But what God considers love can be. Remember in the movie Aladdin um, where uh, Jeannie and the... And the Ginny and Aladdin are having their first conversation. The, the three provisions and the, the wishes. One is, I can't make anyone fall in love with you. We can't command feelings. God doesn't command feelings. He commands loving actions and attitudes. It is a matter of will to love someone. Not a matter of feeling. John, uh, at the end of the chapter, towards the end of the chapter, says that he is writing for one reason. So that you can know that you have eternal life. If, if you believe in the name of Jesus, we can know that we have eternal life. How do I know if I'm going to heaven? You can know. If you have the Son, you get everything. If you don't have the Son, you have nothing. With Jesus, you have everything. Without Jesus, you have no, nothing, no matter how big that stack of nothing may be. Because Jesus is, as he says, the way, the truth, the life, only. So John gives us an assurance. If you have Jesus, you have everything. Most of this letter he spends sort of um, firing at these false teachers over and over again. I think when he gets to the end of this chapter, uh, verses 19, 20, and 21, he is really like nailing down the nails in the coffin lid of the false teachers. Look at what he says down there in, in verse 19. We know, they claim they have special knowledge. John says, I've got actual knowledge, and here's what we know, that we are God's children. 
bang. There's no doubt. The world is controlled by the evil one. Bang. And some of you might say, oh, wait, I'm not sure I agree with that. We can talk about that later. But John says right here that the evil one, God's enemy, is the one who's in control of everything going on down here. Certainly everything that's evil. God's son, Jesus, came and he gives real understanding. He is true. We are in him, the truth. He is God and brings eternal life. We are God's children, and we have nothing to fear. We don't need to worry about false teachers coming in here as long as we cling to the truth. We know because of John's witness, John's testimony, because of Paul's uh, testimony, all, all the things that are written in the New Testament, all the things that are written about the New Testament and its story, we can know that Jesus defeated sin and defeated death, and in doing so, defeated Satan. He may be running the show down here. He's got free reign, but he can no longer hurt God's children. In temptation, in persecution, in martyrdom, the message from John is, we are God's children. Remain in him. Your belief your obedience, and your love. That's what shields you from Satan's advances. We have the truth. The false teachers are truth twisters. They take from it, they add to it, they turn it all the way around. John says they're liars. The, the, last, the last line of 1 John is don't have anything to do with idols. How's that really fit in there? Because people have put all kinds of other things in the way. Special, special information from God, that's what I'm going to go after. A special relationship with God that nobody else can have because I'm somehow better than they are, that's what I want. See, that's, that's not worshiping God. That's worshiping your own desires, your own pride, your own arrogance your own position. Don't allow anything to take the place of the one true God. Period. The son. The son who will take the son. John says, whoever takes the son gets everything. Father, we're grateful that you have given us um, your truth. It's been written down centuries ago for us to read and to study and to understand and then apply to our lives. Lord, we want to hang on to that truth with everything that we have. We do not want to let go of the living word of God, Jesus. We do not want to let go of the Holy Spirit. We want him to be in our lives changing us from the inside out. We want to become more and more like your son. Lord, we don't want to have anything to do with the darkness. We want to step into your glorious light and follow you more and more closely every single day. So, Father, if there are those this morning that need to make that decision public to follow you, to, to turn away from their own plan, <clears throat> to give up on, on messing up their own lives on their own, and to follow you, to find Light and life, we pray that, that they'll do that this morning before they leave this place. Lord, we thank you for the testimony of the water and the blood and the Holy Spirit. And we ask, Father, that it would, uh, those three things would continue to convince us of the truth, to hold us close to the truth. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Every weekend... We celebrate the Lord's Supper. Not every church does that. Uh, we find the example uh, in the New Testament. That's uh, our pattern for life together. Um, communion is for all those who count themselves as a follower of Jesus.
So I've got to have four men uh, to come now and begin uh, to serve the elements to the congregation. If you're watching from home, please make sure that you have your, uh, your bread and uh, grape juice ready to partake with us in just a few moments. Um, I I thought about uh, starting this next paragraph this way Um, last night I had the strangest dream but I know some of you would start singing a song in your head uh, almost immediately I did have a dream this week Um, I had a dream this week that was really sort of unsettling I've been having a lot of really vivid dreams in the last couple of weeks. This one was especially um, vibrant. Uh, in, in the dream, I was reminded of the long list of my failures and shortcomings before God. I don't think it was my judgment day, but I, I found myself in this dream squirming, being embarrassed, humiliated, humbled by my list of sin. I woke up that morning thinking about how awful that experience was. And then I quickly remembered how grateful I am and how grateful we all are for God's grace and his forgiveness. The report of our sinfulness is scrubbed away by the death of Jesus. Our guilt is pardoned by God's love and his justice. Let me read some words from the 103rd Psalm. Praise the Lord my soul and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the blood of Jesus that removes our sin as far away from us as it can possibly go. Thank you for the ability we have to stand before you washed and clean in Jesus. We are grateful for his life, for his death, for his resurrection. In his name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Luke 22 says that Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them disciples saying this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after the supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you Um, before um, before I uh, um, dismiss you, um, I want to let you know that um, one of our young ladies uh, has made a decision that um, she wants to be baptized today. Hope Deaver, um, where are you, Hope? Come on up here. <clears throat> and and Rhett, you should come too. <clears throat> Hope and Rhett. Um, are going to be married, not this coming Saturday, but the next Saturday. <clears throat> and uh, Rhett and his family um, for a few generations have been a part of the, the church family here. Um, and um, Hope has been uh, with Rhett um, for a long time, a long time. Uh, she's been listening. She's been watching. Initially, she's like, I don't want to go to your church. I don't want to. But um, she she has been coming, and she loves what she's experienced here. And so um, she wants to begin her new life with Rhett, um, new with Jesus as well. Um, so let me ask you, Hope. Do you believe that Jesus is God's son? Do you want him to be your Lord and Savior? 
I want you to repeat these words after me. Grab my hand. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, my Lord and my Savior. Amen. So, um, Grandpa Terry is going to do the baptism this morning. Um, before they go back and get ready, um, <clears throat> who is going to be willing for the next 40 days to pray for hope as she begins her walk with Jesus? Okay, we, we got your back, all right? Um, hope and Terry are going to go to the back and get ready. I'm going to ask the band if they'll come up. We're going to um, sing a song together um, while they make their preparations uh, and then uh, then we'll witness this new birth okay all right The song we're going to sing while they're um, preparing for uh, Hope's baptism is is a new song for us, but it is not a new song. Um, it's it's you know super duper old, like 25 years old. Um, which you know you look at other hymns that are written in the 13th century. This was like 10 minutes ago, um, but um, it it really is a wonderful prayer. Uh, of, of what we what we need from God and what we uh, what we want from him uh, we want his light we want his grace and we certainly want his love um, so uh, let's uh, let's sing this prayer to him together
if you'll plan to stick around and say hello to your new uh, your new sister, this brand new bouncing baby girl. Um, we're going to bring our uh, stream to a close. Thank you so much for being here with us this morning. Um, the band's already here. We're, we're, we're good to go now. We're, we're hot and ready. So let's sing a couple more uh, worship songs together. Let's stand and sing.